guys, Craig from Fix It Fellows, and I'm doing something a little bit of high tech, well high tech for me, I've got involved with 3D printing. Now, um, got myself an Ender S3 Pro, I think it's something like that, it's a second hand model, seems to work perfectly well. I've downloaded one prefabricated file, downloaded for a little one inch square little thing, and now I've had my first foray into actually doing a bit of CAD design and I'm going to show you the software I've used for that, it's called 3CAD and uh, I've had a little dabble with it, I took a tutorial uh, YouTube video on it and um, this tutorial was on creating a phone holder. Now from that phone holder I've done a few little adaptions myself just to prove to myself that I've kind of taken the tutorial on board and then I printed it. Now let me show you how I've actually done it. So I open up FreeCAD. Okay so here we are in FreeCAD and what you're seeing is the kind of side profile of my stand as you can see. There's my side profile. So without going into too much detail, really, really high level, what you first do is make a two-dimensional sketch of how you want your part to look. Um, and that's done by uh, creating a series of lines, joining the lines together, prescribing them some sort of dimensions, a little bit of mucking around, making these nice curvy bits here and here. Um, but that's sort of finer detail. And then from that, you then tell it that you want that to be a three-dimensional object so that's called padding out and then you tell it the depth so in this case the side profile is like that and when we padded it the depth is that that distance which is what 75 mil so then you then get a representation a bit like this you see three-dimensional object now from there you wouldn't want to sort of work on each of these surfaces or faces so so in order to create these uh, cutouts or whatever on that face what I've had to do is create a sort of what they call a datum line or a datum plane and that sounds complicated but all that is is a workspace associated with that face and if I click on this orange square that correlates to this face like that you see it turns green and once that's turned green you can work on that face and anything you draw in that space on that datum plane affects that face part of the model so as you can see I created a second datum uh, plane on the back there in order to create the cutouts on that face of the model so you know you can have as many of these date and planes as you require depending on how many faces your model has got it can start to look very complicated but doing it this way you kind of can manage each part individually and when you change one part it doesn't affect the other unnecessarily if you don't want it to etc etc but you know that's getting into the nitty-gritty okay so I've managed to create my three-dimensional object as I want it there and then what you do is you export this file which is an STL file uh, save it and then you can then take it into another program that will then convert it into the G code that your printer needs in order to print so if we come out of here and then we go into uh, Creality Print Creality is the company that produces my 3D printer we fire that up We then get presented with what appears to be the uh, print bed of your printer and we need to go to file, open file and we need to open up that uh, file that we just created in the CAD package so I'd called it phone stand so we do that and there you can see my object appears on the virtual print bed there and you can rotate it and whatever and, and see exactly how it is now it defaults to being positioned onto the print bed in that fashion which is like that and I was concerned about the printer producing those overhanging parts so 
I informed this file to turn my object like that, thinking it would be able to cope with the printing a bit better, which, you know, maybe it did, but it still had a little bit of trouble. Okay, yeah, so what I did is I went over here to the rotate, hit the rotate, and we want to rotate it around the green line, which represents the Y axis, because you've got three dimensions. Obviously, you've got the X, Y, and Z. Uh, so if you watch, I'm going to rotate the Y axis 45 degrees, and it flips it like that, and then 45 degrees again, it puts it on its side. So it is like, how is it? It's like, it's like that now on the print bed. So anyway, that's how I asked it to print. So then what you can do, you can, uh, let me see, what do we do? Yes, we come down here and what we need to do is tell it to start the slice. Now, from what my understanding is, slicing is literally slicing this print up into loads of layer, layer, like multiple layers. So if you imagine the printer nozzle going zzz, one layer, two layers, three layers. So slicing is determining how many layers of print there are. So we hit the slice. It's processing, it's thinking about it. There we go. It's now worked out how many layers and how it's going to print. Over here we get a load of information about what that print's going to be like. So it's telling us printing time, the amount of material. So the filament is going to use just over 11 meters of filament. The model or the amount of filament it's going to use is going to be 65 grams worth. And there apparently it works out the price which currently is set in a yen value. Um, let's have a look here. So that's not to have to really worry about at the moment. If we come down here, we can actually observe how it intends to do the print. We get a kind of virtual view of it printing. So we can either watch every individual move of the nozzle, or if I click on that, I can tell it to show us each floor or layer. So if I hit the layer, and then I hit start. We will watch how it prints. There we go. As you can see, that's how it's going to produce that item. like that and then you should end up with that so from there we need to export that gco file and then what you do is you assign it a name and you save that file onto a little memory card that can be taken out of your laptop and put into the printer so um, and it will save it as G code. So I've done all of that, obviously. So there you go. That's what you do on the laptop. That's how you create your 3D model in a virtual world, and then how you subsequently create the G code to tell the printer what to do. So you then take your memory card, put your memory card in your printer, and instruct it to print that file. And then in however many hours, in this instance, five hours, 47 minutes, you should end up with something like that. So what I'm going to do at this point is we're going to cut away and I'm going to show you some footage of how the printer was uh, performing during the print and then subsequently when I went to it to find ha the, the final print product. So, 
Let's go and see what the printer has been doing overnight whilst I have been sleeping. Well, sleeping a little bit. Okay, now the printer should have finally finished. Um, let's go and have a look, shall we? Yeah, it looks complete. And what have we got? We certainly have something. Let's try taking it off of there, shall we? So there you can see the model and on the bottom there's like a, a pre-print layer that gets snapped off. So let's peel this model off of the print uh, bed. Comes off like that, leaves a fairly clean base. That's the bottom and there we are. That is my telephone stand or rather like that all I've got to do is break off that end bit So we need a little bit of cleaning up. You get the general idea. Um, like it's incredibly strong. And as you can see, it has some spring tendency to it. So, this was my greatest concern because these effectively are unsupported overhangs and it's dealt with it quite well. So I've got a bit of stringiness there, that's, that's where it was trying to print an overhang. So that will clean off. Um, but for my first ever print attempt from my own file that I've created, I'm rather pleased with that. So there are some obvious faults in my actual uh, design. Um, let's have a look. So for instance, I created these cutouts here to limit the amount of uh, plastic that was used for printing. And as you can see, there's some parts that didn't get fully uh, pocketed, I think they call that. 
Um, yeah, so that's all just down to the file, the actual file I produced. Um, but again, it's the first time I've ever done any 3D CAD designing. Uh, and then the other thing is, so that that is how the stand works, goes like that, and your phone slots in there. Well, the fundamental problem is I haven't made this bit deep enough for my phone to sit in. But hey, it proves the point that um, I've got a basic grasp of CAD and I know how to export and I can actually print. So for the first ever attempt, I'm fairly pleased with that. And I've got to say, I'm very impressed with what appears to be the strength, rigidity of this filament, which is just PLA. Um, that's how it's come out. With a bit of sanding and filing, that would come up really well. So there you go. There's my first ever foray into CAD and 3D printing. Um, I'm quite pleased to be honest, that's turned out rather well. It's given me a very fundamental low level understanding of how CAD works uh, and given me some confidence that I could tackle some other things going forward. Um, and you know, there's going to be some exciting opportunities for using this technology. Uh, it's going to come in very handy. So um, thank you once again for watching and as ever, please go to the trouble of liking and subscribing so that you get notification of my latest videos and uh, check out some of my existing stuff so thanks again guys and i'll see you very soon